All right. Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of Bringing the Zoo to You. Uh, my name is Scott and I'm an animal care specialist here in the Ambassador Department. Uh, department and I am joined today by um, Francine and Adelina who are two of our other animal care specialists. Um, so if you are at home and you're a frequent watcher of these videos, you may recognize these animals that we have today, um, but we are joined for something special. So we have our uh, main attraction over here is Beaker, our tawny frogmouth. So you may have seen Beaker before. He's pretty popular online and he's a pretty cool guy to show up on these videos. But today we're actually celebrating Beaker's birthday. So tomorrow, um, June 16th, is Beaker's birthday and he is turning two. So we are here to celebrate this young man's life. Um, <laughs> And the reason Adelina is over here with another bird is because it's his birthday party. He needed a friend, right? So, um, <laughs> Tawny Frogmouths are from Australia. And so, unfortunately, Beaker's family could not make it to the party today because they're all the way across the ocean. Um, so, we decided to invite a friend instead. And that, <laughs> our friend there is um, Sterling, who is one of our screech owls. Um, part of the reason we wanted to bring Sterling as well just so that we could show you that tawny frog mouths are a little bit different than owls. So even though they might have some similarities, especially in color uh, with these two, um, a lot of people tend to think that tawny frog mouths are some type of strange looking owl, but they are a totally different bird in fact. Um, they are part of the nightjar family. So some of the differences here with Beaker um, compared to an owl and some of the characteristics that make them different, um, their eyes are kind of, sticking out the side of their head a little bit, go. and that's different from the owls that are more front-facing. Um, tawny frog mouths actually get their name from the fact that they have such wide mouths. Now, I don't know if Beaker's gonna open up for us today. We'll see, oh, there you go. So they catch their food a little bit differently, and that uh, makes them a little bit different than owls, um, but they do get that name from that big wide mouth. Um, Beaker's actually being pretty calm today, taking some food, usually he's kind of camera shy, but. Maybe because it's his birthday, he's just ready for any and all treats that you're going to give him. Um, we wanted to bake Beaker a cake, but he mostly eats like small mice and bugs, and that doesn't really work well uh, in the baking world. And I don't know, we don't really have any, I don't know if Martha Stewart could like whip something up with bugs, but we're not that skilled culinary wise. Um, but he's here to celebrate anyways. We came to give him some of his favorite treats to celebrate that big number two. Um, and we also got a couple other things that he likes a lot. I know Francine brought a spray bottle, which Beaker loves getting misted sometimes. So it's one of his favorite things. He likes to cool down on these hot summer days by getting misted and makes him pretty calm and relaxed. Um, as I mentioned, though, we have his uh, friend Sterling over here came to join the party. Now Sterling, unfortunately, it's not Sterling's birthday, so he's not going to get all the same treats, but. They do actually eat some very similar things. Um, differences being between the tawny frogmouth and the owls is that they just have different ways of catching their prey. So if you notice that Adelina is wearing a glove, uh, that's because owls have really strong feet. That is one of the characteristics of owls that tawny frogmouths do not have. Francine doesn't require that glove because Beaker has, I don't want to say weak feet because I don't want to hurt his feelings, but they're a lot less weak. <laughs> they're a lot weaker than say the uh, owl, for example, because um, tawny frog mouths tend to ambush their prey, so any bugs um, that are flying around or a, even small mice, like they're usually going to try to trick them, whereas owls just kind of swoop down silently and grab onto their prey and they're going to use those strong feet to grab on. The frog mouth is typically going to use that um, big mouth to catch their prey. I think we hear a little bit of noise, so beaker is usually kind of shy. Frog mouths are really cool, they make a lot of vocalizations. Um, a lot of vocalizations that mean different things, but um, he tends to be pretty quiet and camera shy when he's out here, but I think we hear a little bit right mm -hmm. now. Um, and if you look at him, he looking, he's looking very thin right now. Um, not just complimenting his physique, but he's actually <laughs> doing a behavior called stumping, which uh, frog mouths tend to do in the wild. They get really flat up against a tree and it, like, they'll sit still just like that and it kind of helps them blend in. Now, I don't know if he's trying to blend in right now because he's just embarrassed because everybody's focusing on him for his birthday <laughs> or what, but um, he is exhibiting that for us. So as I mentioned, um, we, are not, we were not able to bake a cake today, but we are celebrating 
two years of beaker. He was hatched at the zoo. Um, we have two tiny frog mouths in the bird department and uh, Beaker came from over there when he was really young. So we've had him in this department for almost two years now. Um, and he's kind of fit right in really well. He has adapted to hanging out with ambassador keepers all the time. He's not hanging out with uh, other frog mouths, but he does have friends. You know, he's got all friends and human friends. And <laughs> he seems to be pretty, pretty comfortable and happy in our department here. Um, frog mouths typically will live 10 to 15 years in the wild. So, Beaker's pretty young. We're, uh, we're going to celebrate a lot of birthdays with this guy, so he'll, uh, we'll be enjoying him for a very long time. Now, another difference that we've spotted between the frogmouth and the owl is that uh, Sterling's mouth seems to be a little bit smaller. Yeah, um, so Sterling's mouth, now the tiny frog mouths, as I mentioned earlier, they have those really wide mouths and that's where they get the name from because it kind of looks like a frog's mouth. Um, owls are a little bit different because they'll actually use their beaks. They have really sharp, narrow beaks that curve down and they're shaped pretty differently than the frog mouth, but owls will use those beaks to like really tear into their prey. So they eat a lot of, um, where I just kind of described their feet and their beaks like a fork and knife, like how we would use a fork and knife. So their beak is a lot like a knife cutting into food. Um, and that's how they tear their prey. Whereas the frog mouths with their wide mouth, they're actually going to swallow their prey whole. So um, you can kind of see when Francine, if he is going to eat for us, you can see when he eats, <laughs> he's actually going to open up his mouth pretty wide and just like take in everything that we give him rather than tearing it apart. So that's how they eat differently. And the, those beaks are designed specifically for that. So does he swallow his food whole or does he chew him up? He does. So he swallows his food whole. Um, like I said, he might be a little camera shy right now. He's not <laughs> eating everything, but um, he likes small mice and he'll, or just tiny little bugs like Francine's giving him some mealworms right now and he'll swallow those, but he'll also swallow a mouse whole too. Hmm. Does he eat anything else besides bugs and mice? Um, in the wild they might, but they're mostly going to eat insects. So. Um, Part of the cool thing about that mouth opening so wide is that they actually use it to um, sort of mimic a flower. So uh, when they open their mouth really wide and they have that big yellow mouth, a lot of insects in the wild will fly around. They'll stand really still. Um, and uh, frog mouths are very good at staying still all the time, but um, they'll open that mouth really wide. And when they actually have these tiny little feathers up here. You can see if you look closely, um, they actually sense bugs that are flying around. So they can open that mouth and when a bug flies by, they'll just catch them right up. He's giving me the side eye, but I guess he's always kind of giving me the side eye. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty unique. Um, a lot of people like these birds because they're very photogenic. Um, I've heard a lot of people say they look like Muppets. Uh, that seems to be pretty common. Um, the babies are really cute and kind of like big fur balls almost, uh, but they are, he's constantly looking at things. They have really strong eyes. Um, so he's not necessarily staring at any person in particular, but he's probably going to spend some time just kind of looking all around and checking everybody out. Now, can people see Beaker and Sterling anywhere in the zoo? Um, they can. So... Both Sterling and Beaker are actually living off exhibit. They live in our ambassador building, uh, but both of these animals as part of our ambassador program will be taken out at different times. Um, so you cannot see them on exhibit all the time, but you will be able to see them at specific times when the keepers are bringing them out to show people. Mm -hmm. and they're both very friendly birds. They're very comfortable around people. They've met a lot of different people. They seem to enjoy us. <laughs> and what building are we currently in? So we are connected to the Animal Ambassador Building right now. Um, this is a room that we use for a lot of different um, training and a lot of different programs and things. So right outside we do have Wild Encounters, which is part of the department, but not exactly where they live. So once in a while, if you are in Wild Encounters, you might actually see Beaker. Okay. And uh, does he fly well? Um, Tiny frog mouths tend to fly very short distances. Um, they're not really built for long flying. Uh, long distance flying and they do actually have a lot of natural predators so that kind of helps them out They tend to live in pretty forested areas where they can blend in and they don't have to move a ton 
So he can fly, but um, he doesn't really do it too much. He's very comfortable with our keepers. As you can tell, I think he's like trying to just snuggle Francine right now. He keeps <laughs> moving closer and closer to her. Um, but he's very comfortable just coming out, sitting on our hands, sitting on our arms. Um, he doesn't really try to fly much at all. And usually when he does, it's just to hop from one perch to another. And is there a way to know when animal ambassadors will be out and where you can find them? Um, right now it's a little tricky because with COVID and everything, we haven't had our regularly scheduled chats um, like we have in the past. So there isn't always a specific way to know exactly what type of animal or when they're going to be out unless we did have scheduled chats. So um, I would just say you kind of have to hang tight and come to the zoo and see us. And once in a while you might get lucky and see a certain thing you want to see. Uh, do you have to trim either Beaker's nails or Sterling's nails? We do actually. We trim both. Um, in the wild, animals would tend to grind their nails down on a lot of different things naturally. Um, they tend to get a little bit overgrown sometimes here, so uh, that is part of our training as um, keepers. We would take care of them. We'll do a lot of the husbandry, is um, making sure their beaks are maintained properly, making sure their nails are maintained properly. And that way, as long as they don't get overgrown or they don't, um, they're shaped well, they won't lead to any other health issues. Okay, so that's just like what somebody would do at home with a pet parakeet or something like that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. or just themselves, you know, humans need to groom, <laughs> they need to groom their nails too, otherwise they can, uh, maybe it's not socially acceptable to just have long, gross nails. So we do the same thing with Beaker. <laughs> He's got to look good on his birthday. Okay, now let's go back to Sterling for a moment. We just heard Beaker vocalizing. Well, we heard here. In, the, in this room, we heard Beaker vocalizing. I don't know if uh, the folks at home were able to hear it. Does Sterling make any noises? They do. Um, so they'll actually, the reason they get their name Screech Owl is because they do make some really loud screeching noises. However, I would say we have two Screech Owls here in the Ambassador Program, and they are both pretty silent all the time. Um, which is not a bad thing because they're very comfortable here. Um, the reason they get that name Screech Owl though is because they do make loud screeching vocalizations in the wild um, and sometimes that can mean that uh, maybe they're threatened or uh, they're making vocalizing to ward off some sort of predator. Um, screech Owls do live around here. I don't know if I've ever personally heard them. They're very, they're, just like Beaker, they're really good at blending into their environment. Those feathers are kind of tailored to just sit in a tree and blend right in. And because of their size, they're pretty vulnerable, so they have to worry about a lot of other large birds or other uh, large animals preying on them. So that um, you don't really hear them too often, and you don't really see them because they're very good at blending in. <laughs> What's up there? I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> Okay. Owls have very good eyesight, though, so maybe he sees something that it's probably, we can. It's probably a mosquito. <laughs> um, so Sterling lives here in the U.S. Can you remind us where Beaker uh, would be found, um, his, his wild counterparts? The is found in Australia. So most, almost all over Australia, they actually um, mostly live in eucalyptus forests, but they will also be found um, in residential areas. A lot of people in Australia see them quite often. They build nests up in trees in urban areas sometimes, but uh, mostly they're in forests. And then they also do live on some of the islands surrounding Australia, um, but mostly on the mainland. So Beaker's parents are still here at the zoo. Do you know where people can see them? They are, I believe, um, in feathers and scales. Um, you can see Beaker's parents. I don't know their names offhand. I don't, I don't either. <laughs> um, I'm personally only familiar with Beaker. He came to us as a, as a little guy and we've bonded with him pretty closely, but should probably go over and uh, just visit his parents, you know, say, hey, good job, your, your son's two now and he's thriving. <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, thanks for joining us for Beaker's birthday. Um, hope you guys enjoyed learning some stuff about him, maybe seeing him again if you've seen him before. Um, and as always, you can visit the website, ccs.org, or you can come see us at the zoo anytime. Maybe you'll see Beaker.